Well, good evening. We're back again. It is dark because the sun has set. My hair is getting more and more unruly. Um, my sister plaited it for me, in case you didn't notice. It's still in a plaque, but um, my hair has a mind of its own. A bit like me, really. I do what I do. What I want to do. When I want to do it. Except when I don't. And then... <laughs> It's a bit silly way to start this rant, but anyway, here we are looking at the uh, full moon. I'm just trying not to be sus, you know, because exactly where I point the camera now, there's a couple of young ladies walking away, and it just looks sus for a dirty old man to be pointing his camera at them when he's actually pointing it at himself. So it is what it is, and I'll just point it up there so we can see. So it's not quite a full moon. I was out of my calculations, with my calculations, by about 12 hours. I think it's not actually full till 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, now that I think about it. Um, so it's 12 hours out, so half of that is, when we're talking about a 50-minute delay, is about half an hour, which is more or less what it was. I was hoping to see a spectacular moon rising right now, but it's actually quite high in the sky already. Ish. Ish, you know, like I say, ish, because if the camera could adjust the actual light conditions, you can see various bands of light. And, you, know, you, you hear some people call this thing called the, um, belt of Venus and that's what they call that dark band of light that you can see what appears to be beneath the moon at this stage or yeah, if we look at the sun which has set behind me it's always darker at the horizon uh, not really it's more darker beneath the moon really maybe that's what they're calling the belt of Venus that big dark section because they're going to say that that is the shadow of the earth so it's not quite eclipsing the moon and I can see why they would think that but it seems reasonable if you couldn't scale according to real scale fortunately some of us can scale tiny little dot there that one right there <laughs> to my naked eye it actually appears really huge it's massive it appears like big <laughs> but the camera just it don't care for that yeah can't zoom in or out on this mode which is what I was doing before so that's a bit of a problem can't zoom in or out on this mode. There you go, that's a bit of perspective for you. When you see a full moon rising and it looks really massive, to me it looks really massive. Maybe if I got smaller and held the camera further away and appear bigger, I don't know. But it just doesn't seem to be working. But it's big, it's really big. It's like at least bigger than a five cent piece anyway you can't talk about size and scale maybe that's what I'm going to make this rant about size and scale yeah yeah fuck no you know been wanting to make this rant for a while actually I didn't even pre-plan this one whatsoever one little bit so now is as good as opportunity as anything because all this information is just right here. Actually, it's in there, right in there, in the pineal gland. I call it the pineal gland, but some people call it the pineal gland because it looks like a pine cone. But once you've opened up that eye, it sees everything and it knows everything. 
I see right before me. So, let's think about it. Let's think about it. You get a lot of people that think, Ugh, I'm just going to take that off. And I might even just... for a second because it's so freaking gorgeous here it really is blessed to be in such a beautiful setting once again so a lot of people think you can just use simple trigonometry to measure distance now I'm here to say to you you cannot use simple trigonometry and simple geometry to measure distance because one thing here how big is my finger there it's like really really big it's bigger than my nose how big is my finger back here not as big as my nose <laughs> I doubt a bit of a big nose I will admit but if I turn around here and I point to the moon my finger is bigger than the moon. I'm pretty sure I'll get it eventually. There. I just blocked the moon. If my finger, my finger is so big, you can block the moon. So no one thinks you can use simple trigonometry to look at far distant things to measure their distance. You're a fucking moron. I said that a little bit too fast, I'll slow it down a bit. You're a fucking moron. You've got no idea. Yes, you can use simple trigonometry to measure distances if the distances are known. And you can plot them in two dimensions on a flat sheet of paper. <laughs> but when you're looking out into reality, <laughs> you know, the moon, even I think it's bigger than, oh gosh, a tic tac. A tic-tac would be bigger than the moon, the way I was holding my fingers right there. So using that as a method, you know, a visual observation of distances will not ever work. Let's say that is. Ooh, the thing is howling. Full moon, I guess. Um, let's say that that is 200 and... 40,000 or 80,000, whatever, 228,000 miles away. And yet, it's barely the distance between my thumb and finger. So how the hell can you use simple geometry, sim simple trigonometry, to tell you how far distant the moon is? It's uh, 15 centimetres away. That's it. Okay. Idiots who prattle on about simple trigonometry to measure far distant things are fucking morons. Did I say it too fast? Oh, they are fucking morons. <laughs> Was that slow enough for you? They are. Oh, hang on, someone will. Grab that and use it against me. <laughs> yeah, I know how the internet works. You plug your modem in and you put your password in, and cross your fingers, and turn it off, and start it up again, and away you go. So, anyway, parallax will be coming soon. Not tonight. If you can't even simple geometry, trigonometry, and understand distance, diminution, convergence, and perspective, <laughs> then what hope in God's beautiful blue earth? And that's something I should have even mentioned last night. I was talking about the, the blue haze of the earth.
is. Although I was raised with a bit of Catholicism in my background, as from my parents, they didn't know any better. But one thing stands out, is we would say the Hail Mary prayer. There we go. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. Got a freaking paraglider. <laughs> G'day, Al. <laughs> the point I'm trying to say here is that I'm... It isn't mentioned in that prayer. But it is mentioned multiple times. And you will always notice a statue of Mary. Mother of God. Cloaked. Blue. What does that tell you? The Mother Earth is cloaked in blue. High altitude balloon footage show the blue haze surrounding her. The Mother Earth. What has heliocentrism done? Heliocentrism has said that everything revolves around Helios, the morning star. Now a lot of people try and say morning star is Venus. Uh, uh, uh. Venus is the evening star. Don't get it confused. The morning star who heralds the day is the sun, Helios. And what does Helios sound like? It sounds a little bit like hell, doesn't it? It's a little bit like it. And we know who the light bringer is, is Lucifer, the light bringer. And so the Jesuits and sun worshippers since time immemorial have been looking to find a way to make everything revolve around the sun. Now the sun of God is the giver of light and therefore the giver of life. So it's the Father. The Father and the Son are one. But unless they have fertile ground to fall upon, there is no life. Now who is the fertile ground? That is the Mother. That is the Mother Earth. The true womb of life. Now the Father gives the seed to create the sons of God and that is what all life is. All life are the creations of the father in the womb of the mother. And so that is where we are. Mother Mary cloaked in blue. Mother Earth. So heliocentrism then because it's male dominated has decided to put us in outer space and turn Mother Earth the womb which we are living upon and within into a tiny insignificant irrelevant speck amongst millions and billions of other random fluke chances of specks of insignificant nothingness that came about by a big bang chaotic boom and somehow all the coins landed up heads all 675 trillion of them at once so that we could is the problem with heliocentrism. It is the great deception and that's what the great deceiver has always been all about is to basically make it so that every child of God is going to rebel against him and believe in falsehoods so that I'm 
the Day of Judgment. The devil gets to win his prize, which is total annihilation of all that exists. Now God is infallible, so you can't lose. We're already on the winning streak. The problem that happened is that God made a decree that whatsoever mankind believes in his name here on earth, then God will hold true in heaven. So the great deceiver found a loophole in that and said, well, then if I can convince all of mankind to believe a great deception, then that will prove you are fallible. And therefore, because the one thing God does is he's patient and he gives a lot of time, even to the great deceiver. We've all heard about the wars in heaven. Now a third of the angels are also sent down here to earth. So this is just a holding ground. It's like a prison cell. This is where we are. Contained because God's number one rule do no harm basically states destroy not that which I have created so even Satan is still one of God's creations and he can't destroy it any more than he can destroy himself he cannot destroy that which exists he can alter its form he can change it into something else but you cannot destroy that which God has created. Therefore, what can you do with a mistake? You can do nothing but contain it. And where was he contained? In a container. And who is the God of this world? Obviously, well, it is Satan. Now don't confuse that with Lucifer. Lucifer is the light bringer. Lucifer is the sun. Of God. And who kills the son of God? Set. The sun has set. So the sun is dead. But the sun always comes back. It always comes back again. Even on the annual journey. This is what our calendar is based on. Our calendar is based on from people in the far northern part of the uh, planar Earth. Because in the summertime here in the outer hemisphere or the outer side of the equator, the southern side, as the path of Helios gets lower and lower through its annual journey, until December 22nd, it appears to get to go in a larger and larger circle just because it's nearer, that's just how perspective works, and therefore the people in the far north, for them the sun has still done that like constantly it's put them into perpetual darkness they're lucky if they even see that much light sometimes they do sometimes they just see the sun and so the ancient seers well what would they do they'd dry out some magic mushrooms those red and white spotted ones and they'd hang them beneath a snow covered pine tree and put some tallow candles beneath them 
and in that perpetual darkness it made quite a pretty scene to see some candles with some decorations hanging off these pine trees and on the night of the solstice they'd have a celebration they'd eat the last of their stored goods which wasn't as good as you'd like to think and they'd partake in this magic mushroom trip and what they would do is go astral traveling and if we know anything what astral means astronomical that means travels through the stars so what they would do then is while their bodies were passed out they'd go astral traveling to see where the sun had gone and this is where the sun had gone here in the far south we will see it shortly again I took some pictures and put them on Facebook yesterday Still no first star appearing yet but that's cool when you astral travel what they saw was the Southern Cross and so they when they came back from their journey of astral traveling they'd say that the Son of God has died on the cross but after three days after descending into the underworld because the horizon to them perspective and stuff makes it look as though it's gone under so it's gone into the underworld and after three days and nights the son of god returns <laughs> and so it's still tradition to this day to decorate pine trees with fancy lights and stuff and three days after the winter solstice celebrate the birth of the son of god december 25th now this is all just ancient not necessarily bad <laughs> it's not bad I'm not trying to say that but it's ancient superstitious sun worship and why wouldn't you worship the sun because that is the giver of life when you live in the far north it's freaking freezing cold most of the year and you get about three months to grow your crops or whatever and then you prepare for the next long cold winter so I don't say that there's anything necessarily wrong or bad with it but it's just wrong to say that the earth goes around the sun that's all the earth is not a tiny insignificant speck in space flying through a vacuum pressurized atmosphere no. all these things they go around us We live within the womb of the great Mother Earth, cloaked in blue. And we are children of the Father, Son, and the Mother Earth. That is what makes us the children of God. And while we are young, we stay with our mother and learn from her suffer from her and when we reach an age we go off to the father and we work in the father's fields because we are children of God we are star seeds each and every one of us we have come from the stars We've incarnated as a tiny child, baby, infant, human, so that we can relearn and re-experience and go back to the stars. And eventually, we might want to come back again. And that is why we will sense a certain sense of familiarity. I can't even see it yet. But I know that the constellation of Orion is just out there. I saw it last night. It will be appearing very shortly. How do I know? I don't know. I just feel it in my bones. From a young age, when I first saw that constellation, I was just transfixed with it. And I knew that that's where I've come from. And so, when people think that 
<clears throat> about aliens and star people and so forth. That is us. That is us. We go back and we recycle after a while. We get a bit bored of being up there knowing everything all the time. So we go, <laughs> all right, sign me up. I'm going to go do this again. So you choose some parents. You wait in line. You go down the tube. You get born as a child. And you get to learn it all over again. This is the beautiful thing about life. Is that you never stop learning. The hardest part is forgetting. But the best part is remembering it again. We are children of God. And we are living on the infinite Mother Earth. We are not on an insignificant speck spinning through space. <laughs> Such the idea is so insane that when you come to your senses, you will wonder how you ever, ever believed it. It's a beautiful day to be alive. Every single one of them. You are blessed.